Ultrasonic cleaners are useful cleaning tools. However, unless you want to fork out significant coin, the sub $100 units are good for jewellery and little else. Although they work well, their size limits what can be cleaned. So I decided to build my own 15.1 litre or 4 gallon ultrasonic cleaner. This will better fit the items that I want to put through the cleaner. And the best part? I did it for less than $100. There are a dozen or so components to this build. This is my parts list. Stripped down, you could easily halve the number of components that you see here. The operational part of the unit is the transducer and the control board. You will not build your own. Instead, you can collect these components from sites like AliExpress or eBay. I picked up a single 100 watt transducer running at 28 kilohertz. My cost was $75. The other significant part to purchase is the ultrasonic fluid container. Make sure that it's stainless steel. I purchased a cheap stock box for $17 as the thinner walls, in my mind, would transfer the transducer frequency better. I might be wrong. But you could also use a catering tray or similar. Just make sure that it's stainless steel and preferably has a lid. I decided to mount mine on a wheeled trolley, but the same build concept can be applied to a desktop unit if you desire. These pictures show the trolley build. I didn't film this part, as I consider it a consequential, although time consuming part of the build. You could convert a bedside table just as easily. The electrical setup is probably the most mentally challenging part of this build, and it is dead easy to do. So that there are no lawsuits thrown my way, please contract a licensed tradesperson to connect your mains electrical components. If you dance with Mr Sparky, then please refer the complaint to the licensed contractor that you used, and not me. As you can see, I added a general purpose outlet to the front of the unit. I read somewhere that the efficiency of the ultrasonic cleaner is enhanced if the liquid you're using has been warmed up to between 40 and 65 degrees Celsius or 104 to 149 degrees Fahrenheit for my American viewers. I'll use the GPO to connect a portable water heater to bring the temperatures up before use. Adding the GPO is optional. The controller board has been mounted in an electronic jiffy box. I have not added any cooling or ventilation at this stage as there was no measurable heat being generated by the unit after 10 minutes operating. It might have just been a cold day so I'll monitor this. The transducer similarly did not heat up. The transducer is supplied with a threaded nut. This nut is designed to be welded to your container and then the transducer is screwed into it. If you have the right equipment then please go ahead and weld it to the base of your stainless steel container. I don't have the required kit so I went down the tr transducer epoxy path. Don't be a scrooge with the epoxy, make sure that there is sufficient coverage and that the transducer is clamped down for 24 hours to ensure a strong bond. A rubber moulding around the cabinet opening will ensure that no vibrations are transferred to the cabinet, thereby amplifying the vibration sounds. And there you have it, all wired up and mounted. Let's put some warm water into the unit and test it. Ultrasonic cleaners use high frequency waves to create cavitation bubbles in your cleaning solution. These microscopic bubbles form and explode quickly 
The force of the bubble action is what drives any contaminants or debris from the surface of the object to be cleaned, without damaging the object. This is why they're used for jewellery cleaning. To test that in fact you are getting the ultrasonic effect, place a sheet of aluminium foil into the unit. If the unit is working correctly, you should see the R4 getting pitted and eventually being destroyed by the bubbles. This is what we got. As a first crude test to some water, I added the greaser and detergent. The degrees and detergents are absolutely optional, and plain water would probably be just as effective. There are specialised ultrasonic cleaning fluids around, and you can choose to use these if you wish. I reached over to my toolbox and grabbed a dirty, rusty and well used Stilson wrench. This will be the first item to be tested. As you can see, the ultrasonic cleaner immediately causes the surface grime to separate from the tool. The plume coming off the wrench is the ultrasonic cleaner working. Left long enough, this wrench will be clean. However, that I suspect that some mechanical agitation may be required, particularly for contaminants with relatively high adhesion properties. In practice, ultrasonic cleaners are used for the final cleaning process. So this wrench would have ideally have gone through an external mechanical and chemical clean before being inserted into the ultrasonic cleaner. The restoration of this Stilson wrench will be the subject of an upcoming video. So remember to subscribe to this channel and be notified when you will see the ultrasonic cleaner in real world use. Are there any first world improvements that we could make? Absolutely. We could have added an automatic fluid temperature control. Maybe a fluid discharge valve. We could have added an operational timer, even a date-driven 24-hour delay timer. We could add additional transducers, although I'd like to check waveform dynamics to make sure that they don't cancel each other out. There is lots that we could have added, but then this build would not have been less than $100. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. Please like, share and subscribe. Comments are always welcome.